A non-native plant is taking over the dunes throughout parts of the southeast, including in the Palmetto State. It's called Beach Vitex, something we thought was eradicated here in 2011. And ABC 15's Mike Owen has been working for you to find out what happened. He actually met with a team of researchers from the North Inlet who are working to solve the problem once again. He's live tonight in Pauly's Island. So what did you find out, Mike? Jen Connor, these right here are local plants. Right here, you've got morning glory. You can see the, the white flower. You've got beach croton over here. But just a few feet away, you have beach vitex. Uh, now, it's similar looking, and it's very pretty. It's got these beautiful purple flowers. It smells great. But if you look up this way, you can see that it's almost completely overtaken, this dune. Native to the Pacific Rim, beach vitex was planted locally after Hurricane Hugo in 1989 to help with dune erosion but it did the opposite. It lacks a fibrous root system, meaning it doesn't trap sand. It also grew too well, overwhelming native plants and harming wildlife. It can grow right over a sea turtle nest. And so they didn't know, you know, when the hatchlings come out, they might actually not be able to get out through that tangle of beach vitex. And in some cases, where it's growing so thickly, the female sea turtles, when they come in, they might not even nest there. A massive undertaking to eradicate the plant with more than $800,000 in funding took place from 2003 to 2011. Believing they had removed 99% of beach vitex, the program ended, but it turns out it's harder to kill than they thought. The seeds are viable forever. <laughs> roots can grow back from little bits of roots, so it's just it's such a tenacious plant. I think part of it was that we just underestimated how good it was gonna be at surviving our efforts. Now the plant is back. Plunkett and her team recently surveyed along the shoreline from Huntington Beach to North Island, finding more than 60 infestations of beach vitex in that region alone. And because of how hardy it is, they need the public's help. We need the public to do is to report where they're seeing beach vitex on their property. Um, it can occur, you know, streets back from the beach. And that's a problem too, because if you have a plant growing a bunch of seed, even if we take it all off the beach, one good storm might wash that seed right back onto the beach where it's going to grow again. And because beach vitex blends in well with local vegetation, it's hard to tell them apart. The key is watching for purple flowers, round leaves, seeds, and how it grows. If I'm looking for it from a distance, it's distinguished by upright stems that grow in sort of a bush form, or it also grows on these long runners with a woody stem. Beach Vitex is also tricky to get rid of. People have to become certified to be able to do it, and this is what they do. They actually slice the stem and then paint a little bit of herbicide on it, and then that way it doesn't harm any of the other local native plants. Plunkett tells me that they are hoping to acquire funding after completing their research and begin new eradication efforts in spring. Reporting live from Pauly's Island, I'm Mike Owen, ABC 15 News. All right, Mike, thank you. And if you think you have Beach Vitex in your yard, you can report it through an app, email, or phone number. We have all the links for you on our website. Just head to WPDE.com and look for Mike's story.